This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, welcome to the webinar on recent trends in digital education. I appreciate everyone joining the session today. You can see the instructions on the screen. Uh, just to avoid the disturbance, please have all your mics on mute and you can send uh, the queries via chat box. There are common instructions that you can see on the screen. So this webinar is an initiative of Kanchi College of Education in Kanchipuram. So I thank the management and the staff uh, in uh, choosing me on delivering this webinar today. I would have uh, the welcome and introduction now provided by Dr. N. Manogaran. Yes, sir. It's great pleasure for me to welcome you all for this webinar organized by Kanji College of Education. I welcome you all once again on behalf of management, principal, staff, and students of Kanji College of Education. And we have selected this topic because of this today's trend. We can't be able to go keep on going with this old and traditional teaching method. For that only we have organized this kind of webinar. And uh, a few words about the presenter he is Mr. Subramani Matikalam from Hyderabad, Director Global Talent Management, some total systems private limited. He is a basically an engineer, graduated engineering. After graduation, he done his PG in Pondicherry University and he is having overall experience of 16 years in the field of education software, which is almost deals with the and uh, peculiar in uh, teaching and education, he is having uh, six to seven years. I hand over the session to Subramanian. Sir, you proceed, sir. Thank you. Once again, welcome everyone. Uh, today, our topic is recent trends in digital education. And we all know that the current uh, pandemic situation that uh, for the last three months or the 90 days in India, um, the entire changes that are happening now are a significant one. We have to be aware of uh, what the changes are happening in education. And there are a lot of opportunities uh, for all of us to understand the latest trend. So there will be few takeaways by attending this session today. So I welcome you all one more time. Um, today we have a mixed set of audience attending um, this webinar. So we have a lot of uh, our learners on this call today are teaching faculty or students related to education they could be a staff in arts and science college or engineering colleges or they may be students uh, who are learning education uh, from the various backgrounds they're coming from like arts and science or engineering or other discipline so we have a very uh, good and mixed uh, set of participants today and all this session um, information would be valuable for all of you. So there's a high level agenda um, that uh, I'm going to talk in the next uh, 45 minutes. So we'll uh, see what a digital education means, understand the evolution of the digital education, what the transformation is happening. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these changes are happening at a very rapid pace. We do not know how the education would be in the next two years to five years. There's so much of changes that are happening. So it is important for all of us to understand and adapt and then able to grow along with these changes and in the trends. So there are digital tools that we would be um, covering today. And also um, there will be a short demo of Microsoft Teams that I thought I will include as part of this session uh, where my kids are using that. So that will give you an idea if some of you have 
not used any of those. And then at the end, we would see if we can have some Q&A answer. So let's go into uh, the objectives. So here, uh, it is critical for all of us to uh, be aware of uh, the technology and how the teaching is evolving and try and understand uh, the digital literacy and how we can improve that across and then try and understand the tools and trends. So this will be the few takeaways after uh, joining the session today. Okay, so now um, everyone would be aware of this term digital education. So what is digital? So digital is an electronic form of using technology to deliver something. So here digital education means it is learning. So here the digital education uh, is nothing but a digital learning and that is aided or supported by a digital technology. So the technology is now part and parcel of all our day-to-day -day life. We use technology extensively than the previous generation. There are generations which never have seen any of this digital evolution, but now uh, the kids that are born now have access to the digital technology. So when I say uh, digital learning, uh, it involves effective and efficient usage of appropriate latest hardware and the software technology available in the market. So it's not just uh, the devices, but the software that comes along with it would help us to aid learning. So example, mobile devices, iPads, computers, laptops, and a lot of other softwares that we use like a PowerPoint presentation that we have, or it could be a videos, or it could be audios, or it could be a Word document or a PDF document that we use. Um, so th there's a lot of transformation that uh, we see over here. So it's uh, the type of learning supported by digital technology or an instructional practice makes us effective use of digital technology because the technology grows, but along with that, uh, facilitators and teachers also have to be digitally literate to understand the trend. So when that happens, then the teaching and the learning becomes a smoother experience. So we see the upcoming generation are tech savvy. They understand and learn a lot of those things. They start using the touch screens and they start playing at a very early age using digital devices. So their exposure to digital tools digital system is much more than somebody who is more than 20 or 25 years old right someone born in 80s born in 70s have to adapt to this change because the students or the kids that are undergoing this learning today are much more knowledgeable in using the technology and also the system and uh, there is always a question on whether the participation exists because when we do a classroom or a traditional way of um, training or delivering a lecture, uh, typically we have a face-to-face -face connection with the student. Uh, we uh, tend to have uh, eye contact. We tend to talk to them, walk up to them, etc. Uh, in the classroom. But here uh, we can also have more participation. It is possible in the digital technology today. And also, uh, we need to ensure the audience attention is there because um, it is easier to get distracted with the digital um, world uh, because there are a lot of uh, disturbing factors are there. But uh, it is, again, uh, a skill that we have to develop to capture the attention as we also like deliver uh, any of uh, classes or training uh, to the students. Uh, a quick uh, infographic here that I put in here, which I found online, which uh, compares what happened in the past, which is the traditional way versus um, the digital uh, literacy that we see today. Right. So the, if you see the traditional way, we used to like go to library, uh, search for the books, look for information um, uh, via those articles that we have. 
uh, made available uh, which are published right those are physical assets that we review uh, and we read uh, which will be more uh, in depth and also like uh, we start taking notes right we use note books pen paper and start um, taking notes and uh, gather information from newspaper articles or from any documents that are published so primary source of knowledge will be the teachers so they gather information uh, from the teachers but if you look at the digital uh, world so there's a loads of information there right so uh, people generally use google and they go and they get pages of results uh, 10 pages 20 pages of results so the top 10 or 15 you you like skim them and find out what you actually need so that is a big and a cultural difference that we normally see which means we have to see the curating and ensure like we link one to the other to the other so there is a multi-modal uh, composition that happens here so we have uh, a design element that goes in we then uh, prepare a visual model and uh, deliver like more like a storytelling because that's when it is going to be more interactive and it can be more interesting as well and then it also follows multiple ways of the data can be analyzed using the technology you can use uh, microsoft excel or you can use microsoft power bi a lot of other tools to analyze you can uh, reuse them and it allows you a lot of um, changes that can be done in a pretty quick and fast manner and a lot of times uh, self-learning is possible uh, with the digital technology and um, the, there is always change it adapts to the change where um, the traditional ways like we like lock down and then unless we get the newer version of the books or we have to continue to look for them so it's like a very high level it shows the difference over here uh, so the evolution of it which um, i discussed a few minutes earlier um, the internet which is the factor which has actually reshaped our life both um, in home as well as at school or at colleges or at our workplaces so imagine in 1995-96 is the period first we got a proper internet connection in india we had the dial-up connections which uh, started available for common public use around 97-98 period so it's 22 years since the internet has been used in india and slowly um, the speed of the internet connection changed it was a 50 board kbps it then moved into a higher speed of 128 and then now we have a really high broadband internet connection are available now and more interestingly uh, we have the internet available on our phone which is at a 4g rate because the phones were primarily used to only for a communication purpose but then now the phones have become smartphones which means it allows us to not only uh, communicate but it is the primary tool to learn to interact and socially connected and it has those various applications and software within the phone which replaced a lot of other things that we normally would like to have or had them as separate so email and mobile are um, the significant changes i would say in this process or the evolution uh, reading writing and all of those have now transformed into more of animation graphics and you have all the fonts available in any language you can get them translated within no time even if you create some content uh, you have an automated translators are available which can easily translate them so there are a lot of research are going in in that direction uh, you can already see google has been testing those uh, um, those uh, translations and then all those details and um, maybe a few years back uh, we had blogs and wikis and podcasts are being popular and if, if you uh, are from 2005 to 10 a lot of people used to have those wiki pages which they go and uh, update blogs have been written and now those all got transformed i would say in the last um, two to three years 
you would see a lot of YouTube channels are coming in. So you have those YouTube as a medium has become a lot more popular. And then the social medium platforms like Twitter, and then you have Facebook. These, uh, these applications have now become predominantly being useful. So that's an evolution. And you can see all these are happening uh, in last five or 10 years, right? So those who born in uh, 90s can appreciate these changes that are now happening and how quick that we have to like understand the change and be at a pace so that we will not get disconnected. And what is aiding this is because of the softwares too, because it's not only the hardware that helps, but the software that comes along with that helps us. There are a lot of animation uh, tools that even you do not need to have a proper um, uh, experience or proper training. You can easily do what is exactly required. You want to edit a document or you want to edit a video file for your teaching. There are a lot of simple and free softwares that are available, which you can quickly learn and then do uh, exactly for the job what you want to do because in the teaching or in the medium that we are in today uh, we should adapt to have all of these uh, content created by us uh, in the past they used to do the presentations right now the presentations all are there but then we have to include videos and animations and then the other creative ideas that bring in your creative juices to get these things done. Now, uh, specifically this session we're talking about because the audience have uh, faculties that teach us in schools and colleges. And um, in the last 90 days, you can notice a lot of schools are now getting into teaching their students using digital technology. Because we know that in colleges, we have it. We know at workplace, we use digital technology. But what we are now seeing is in the schools as well, there is a significant use of digital technology in learning. So that is one of the applications is what I plan to like kind of uh, do a quick uh, demo of it. So which means uh, it is no longer that you go to college and start using these digital devices. It starts from the school level. So there are kids um, at a kindergarten level or class one to five also have a digital learning exposure. Again, it's a different uh, discussion that we have to have whether uh, kids should be exposed to digital learning maybe below, below class five or, or do they really need to be uh, taking training in that fashion or or do we reserve this to higher classes, maybe class seven, eight, 10, or a higher second? So that's a separate debate. But what I'm trying to say here is, even in schools, we have started using it, not only in our country, but in all the other countries, it's the same thing. And the present situation, the pandemic situation, accelerated schools in start having uh, digital technologies in there so kids are learning using ipads and mobile phones maybe the screen time is for three to four hours that um, they have their classes that happens and it's pretty interesting which with my experience what i've seen with my kids who are in the middle school now class seven and class ten and they can definitely uh, uh, enjoy it and it also gives them a lot of uh, ways and avenues for them to um, uh, exposed to these at early in their um, uh, school education. But there is a, definitely a challenge for teachers here. Uh, that's the one I mentioned about where the Google um, is our library and the go-to place and Wikipedia. And now uh, if we do not know anything, if we want to find something, we automatically go to Google. So it's perfect and it's a fantastic medium that exists, but what we need to be sure is uh, the information is overloaded there. So we should have an ability to identify uh, from all the information, skim through and find out uh, what is relevant for us or what is correct, because it is possible that uh, there is no governance or control in this content that is there in the web. And we may get trapped because of some information which is there which we believe is true, but it may not be true. By the same way, the dictionary and the Kindle, uh, the Kindle here I'm talking about is the Amazon Kindle app, where the books and stories and everything which you can develop kids to start 
reading uh, from a childhood but everything has its limits so you need to also ensure uh, that the limit is maintained there so this changes uh, in um, teaching methods by incorporating technology will bring a significant change from what um, we can imagine today um, so we are underestimating it but i would say the digital education transformation is happening so quick next year we would not know what changes are coming in uh, so we need to keep pace with it is my uh, thought here so advantages which is pr pretty straightforward um, a lot of us know and i know a significant number of uh, you who are present in this call today uh, you have been exposed uh, to the learning or either you would be delivering them or you would be part of those uh, lectures and webinars that you are attending so gone are the days those textbooks which is like voluminous like thousand pages of books and all those things have gone now it is more of very sleek slim and very attractive information that uh, we have so Think about for a minute why does digital uh, education is appealing and why there is constant changes and uh, um, advancement happens there the number one reason uh, that I would say is it gives you a personalized learning and an adaptive learning what do I mean by that what is personalized learning which means I can learn anytime anywhere compare that to um, a situation where you are going to classroom there is a possibility that you may not be able to join the class or there is a possibility that uh, you might have other work that you missed that particular uh, class lesson. so you have to learn Right, so when I mention as personalized learning, what I mean is um, we can learn anytime and anywhere. I can learn in the morning, I can learn in the afternoon, or I can learn in the evening, or any any point of time. Because when it is go digital means anytime, anywhere. And you would have observed that in your class, there are some students who can learn quickly, some students would take time to learn. Uh, so the pace of learning varies from one student to another and we all understand that so this Digital technology allows them to learn in capsules So in our carpet that I work for we we make a two-minute three-minute uh, Training content and training video so that we call it as capsule sized training so um, generally kids get bogged down by the books right the books today we have 500 pages 300 pages 200 pages but when it is like a bite-sized learning which means just give them what they need and also like ensure the foundation of the fundamentals are made clear for them then they can able to open up and then get interest in education and learn more so small and uh, very well constructed content like a five minute lecture or 10 minute videos on which will actually go well into the mind of the students or the kids and it helps them in learning much faster way and adapt to it so uh, it is also supporting a collaborative learning which means we can form a group of students who can actually collaborate interact work on assignments together and we can have a highly interactive way so in the class we let them all clap we let them all appreciate it right how do they do it in digital education you have an option to wave your hand you have a like buttons you have a lot of those emoticons that we call it right uh, we send those smileys we send those different icons across so that makes it a lot more interesting curious and all those are actually making them uh, feeling involved in it so that's the advantage of digital education today now let's see the emerging trends 
right so that's important uh, when i mentioned the smartphones the smartphones are here for about 12 years maybe 2007 8 onwards we started getting phones which have an internet available and now the phones have much more than internet we have a lot of apps being created right earlier stage the phones just had a browser which where you can go and browse now you have core apps where you can do the banking you can do the learning you can do uh, multiple um, items using the apps applications right that's a short form so people install the apps for various purposes and a lot of companies are creating apps so the same way for digital education as well we have apps so in india today right the smartphone users are 500 million which is 50 crore people having a smartphone access which has to grow for sure it is growing at a 30 to 40 percent rate every year so uh, the evolution in the technologies that some of you may be aware of what a cloud is what a data center is and what a video based learning uh, for example you have a lot of app based uh, tutorials and videos are available for the kids so you might have heard about byju's you would have heard about khan academy uh, videos you have heard about uh, um, um, something like uh, uh, devices which support learning um uh, like extra marks so these are a lot of popular ones so some of them are paid version which are expensive too but uh, um, kids are using them uh, from class one onwards because they have very interactive assessments uh, quizzes and videos so we used to play the rhymes we used to play a small clip of videos but now it has become a lot more better because we have a built-in assessments in it when I say built-in assessments, you can quickly test their knowledge and immediately go back and it will give you a result. Analytics will be available. Okay, hey, you got 80%. Uh, the 20% what the kids missed, it can give a breakup of these are the topics that you have to strengthen. These are the topics you have to be better. And these are the topics you have to So what um, what we need to uh, what we need to uh, do is ensure uh, we also tie an assessment as much as possible and as much as online, right? So we wonder whether the kid would cheat and etc. Don't worry about it, right? When when they start um, using ad or adapting to this, uh, it becomes much more easier and and it helps you to quickly evaluate a child to find out where they stand, what you need to improve for them. So you can give a personal care and attention. So there's an innovation that happens in the e-learning industry. Right? The e-learning industry was primarily catered to corporate professionals, getting them trained. So I come from the number one e-learning company called Skillsoft. I work for them. So we develop content for leadership training. We develop content uh, for project management. We develop content uh, for professional development, communication skills, interview skills, uh, how do you improve them, or a core skills, how you would learn uh, on the job, right? So if you are a developer, or if you are a tester, or if you are a person working in um, uh, in, a, in, a, in a domain background, we develop content for them, whether they are insurance or banking. But the same e-learning is now is available for college and school education so that's a significant a trend that i'm observing in the last four or five years so this trend is very critical for all of us to be aware of it so it's no longer that happens in corporate it it's now happening at our home at at every level right so uh, we should have more options available but technology enabled learning uh, is the innovation that happens over here Now, the scope of digital education is also important that uh, we have to understand. Um, as I mentioned earlier, right, it builds the cognitive skills elements of the child's brain. Uh, traditional classroom training, right, we could not uh, identify because some kids would like to uh, learn by seeing. Some kids would like to learn by hearing. Right? How do we address it? So we need to have a combination of both. So we need to have a touch points where uh, kids have audio and video. 
which means it will be a lot more impactful and flexibility factor which i already discussed which means you can study uh, at anywhere any time at any pace some would like to read four hours at one go some would read every one hour they want to take a break you can pause come back and continue so it allows you to actually pace the way that you want to complete your uh, course or syllabus or the lessons and teachers are finding it more and more convenient because once they create a material or a content they can um, reuse and repurpose them so the initial effort is there but once you have it or once as a faculty uh, you think on the design you think on how you can work on it identify the tools that will help you you can start with a pdf document or a ppt etc you don't need to think about a fancy stuff but try and have some animations in there try and have some interactions there try and have some assessments in there so you can engage the audience um, to a level and uh, make the uh, learning much more interesting and the educational institutions today as i'm talking now uh, most of the cities and most of the tier one towns started doing uh, online classes for the kids some are doing it from class five and above some are doing it even for class one the time is varying which means all of them are investing in some kind of a software and system and training for the teachers and faculty so as i speak this year we are going to have majority of our school going kids and uh, college students are going to use digital education. There is no choice for us and uh, there is no time left. We have to jump right in and try and ensure that we learn and also ensure we are able to deliver. So definitely the classrooms are going to come back for sure, but will we go back to it? No, we would continuously have certain percentage of digital education continuing further and further and further so i would say um, this year it is going to be 70 80 percent digital education but next year and year onwards we will be still going to have 60 40 ratio or 50 50 ratio going forward and maybe in um, two or three years this is going to be an alternate way of education so a lot of you might have heard about distance education correct now it is going to be digital education so you are going to have, so it's going to continue. So teachers need not go to school or need not to be in uh, colleges, it can be done. So uh, the changes will happen slowly in the tier two towns and the villages and other places because it will take time for them to adapt. And there are other challenges that we have, but I'm sure uh, places like cities or tier one towns are going to change first and it is happening now and I'm seeing it. So you can appreciate what I'm telling here, right? So that is the change we are seeing here. So this is critical because teachers should adapt to this change. Change is now, is no longer constant. It is evolving and we have to adapt to this change. Then it becomes a really, really a smooth experience. So uh, try and, um, try and find a lot of these courses available online uh, get yourself equipped it's no longer a specialization it is expected it may it may come a little later in the curricula that what uh, uh, teachers are now doing but uh, definitely um, this is something our uh, kids the students are much more aware of these and much more quick in learning them so we have to also do that there is no age you, you may be 25 you may be 30 years today you may be 35 years doesn't matter uh, even if you are going to retire next year still you have an option to ensure that you understand this trend and uh, make some time uh, in your day-to-day -day life to see the trends observe them the important interesting part is these trends no need to somebody to teach you you can actually find them available all you need to do is do the right search and spend uh, our time on it so that it becomes uh, really a turning point in your life it's cost effective as i mentioned it's reusable 
uh, and the future is this, right? So you have to continuously like ensure uh, innovation and uh, the interactiveness that are going to come in here, you, you adapt to it. Uh, not necessary that you have to actually have it in your school, but if you are learning this, then you are adding it to your skill set and you are also grooming and developing yourself every day. So um, there shouldn't be any day that goes without learning. So try and learn bits and pieces every week, every month, so that you can adapt and tune to these changes. So overall, like we look at the summary, what we have seen so far. Um, um, I think I'll check on the time. So we are at uh, 37 minutes over. So the textbooks, homework, these are now going to be history. Uh, the whiteboard and chalk mark, they may be there, but maybe I will see another next uh, um, five, six years, they're going to disappear slowly and steadily. Smart boards are going to be in there which is going to be very interactive way uh, where you can drag and drop, where you can actually uh, play simulations. You can uh, use uh, practicals over there. Uh, the digital world uh, is actually becoming a lot more cheaper uh, in the sense you don't need to invest heavily because the investments are also getting to a reasonable rate. Uh, we can able to get those licenses at a cheaper cost today than what it was. And every student, is going to have a digital device with them, teachers and students. So it's not a phone, it could be an iPad, it could be a tablet, or it could be a Kindle. Uh, so we are not far away from it. Uh, of course, the higher secondary and college kids now have laptops and kids, which they take it to the school or colleges, but that is going to happen at a, a real early stage of uh, the school going kids going forward. So just wait and watch these changes, uh, whether you like it or not, it is there, it's up to us to adapt and then to benefit from it. Um, I will spend some time on the tools because we are talking about uh, the um, latest trends uh, in the digital education. Um, there are several tools that schools are now um, purchasing and implementing. Um, there are a lot of free tools available as well, like the Google Classroom, uh, being extensively used in a lot of schools and there is slack there is zoom zoho which is an indian product um, then microsoft teams uh, dropbox more there's there's n number of them there are a lot of them there could be at least two or three you have to be familiar with uh, i would say uh, you should try and understand look at those uh, videos how uh, google classroom works or how a microsoft teams work uh, some of them which you would definitely see a lot of the schools are going to adapt pretty soon uh, so keep an eye on those changes uh, these web-based tools are making the digital education a lot more interactive and it is going to actually uh, evolve further and further like the success here definitely lies in the hands of teacher as well because the teacher again are the one who is going to run this so the kids cannot be left on their own, right? So you still have to have your role to be played. Not everything, everyone can learn on their own. And there's an effective way the teachers play here. They could be building content or you would buy the content from outside as well. So it's it depends on um, what the decision making is, but ensure that uh, the other elements are there like uh, the evaluation, how you assess a kid, how do you make these interactive, that's where you have to like get put your thinking hats on and then uh, try and work with them. So this is more um, child centric, but at the same time, uh, there is a role for teachers to play. Um, the top five tools is what I want to like kind of uh, quickly cover. Of course, you can uh, definitely find a lot of uh, information available online. Uh, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, see some Khan Academy is also like an NGO that um, built a lot of, they started uh, creating math tutorials, right, initially, but then they've become really popular in the last 10 years and a lot of content is free available. They have a paid version, of course. The paid version will be a lot more evaluating the student, giving them uh, the analytics, okay, uh, the, the student is great in algebra, but uh, not not in uh, uh, other data handling. Okay, so in data handling, where the area, so it helps you to fine tune their knowledge, get a lot of assessments done, and um, and make them really learn 
learning as a fun and also uh, it becomes really deep as i mentioned the cognitive way of learning so it would be very impactful for them right so, so sometimes um, the teachers uh, mood and how the teachers feel they may be uh, at a certain time extremely enthusiastic in certain days they may not be able to put their 100 percent but here you have all of those ability available and there are a lot of um, the uh, indian ones are there like e and kahoot which are also available and they are also available in different languages too so if you're looking at uh, um, regional languages you're going to look at tamil telugu malayalam so canada so you have a lot of them are available so not necessary that everything is in english but a lot of them are also in the regional language so that is going to help mostly these are now concentrating on uh, max science right but it will actually cover all the subjects over a period of time i do uh, saw some of those on social studies and yeah, languages cracking. available so your voice is cracking it's not clear okay is it better now yeah a little bit sir it's better okay now uh, this is another in interesting infographic that i found which is the top 200 uh, tools so see the number of logos on the screen that's amazing so you nobody can ever imagine these many uh, learning tools are available so these are not only for the schools or colleges these are for corporates as well right but then if you look at uh, the top 10 and the top 100 a lot of these logos um, we are familiar with we're using it uh, and there's an extensive amount of investment that happens today in the digital education so there are tons of tools available uh, youtube is primary then you have google you have linkedin slack zoom are in the top 10 today but there are a lot of others that i covered are there uh, again, there are a lot of uh, changes in the order it is going to happen, uh, but definitely a lot of them are focusing on training the students and the kids or teaching them over here. So we need to be familiar with it. Um, on the on the technology trends, uh, as I mentioned, now we are not using the laptop systems much. We are using the apps on our iPads and in the mobile phones. Um, so keep an eye on the e-learning uh, revolution that is happening and then the mobile learning m learning is mobile learning which is where the mobile learning is what happening because you carry your mobile which is a very powerhouse which has all all of those information in there uh, which you can quickly utilize them and if you notice uh, rather than ppt now a lot of walkthroughs are happening in simulation say for example if you're explaining uh, the student about photosynthesis uh, you draw a picture of a plant you you explain about the ingredients the sunlight how the chlorophyll is helping the plant how it generates its food etc right so that's that's the theory portion but here um, the walkthrough is going to ideally help the kids to uh, connect all these pieces together and once they learn then the simulation comes then the kids have to click okay step one step two step three name the parts name the important um uh, items in there or if i come if i have to complete uh, five steps what are the step one through which, which means you are making them learn um in an interesting way you are making them understand you are making them to practice it right away so that is what the simulation is going to do which is going to be very effective for a lot of kids uh, it is going to help them with slow learners as well okay give them the confidence that is required and now the videos are being played even in the kindergarten right we are playing those uh, recordings of the rhymes and everything but there are a lot of uh, other changes that are happening in video um, the youtube channels that i mentioned about you can learn a to z there are several people starting their own channel sharing the information today uh, so how to do it why we do it what to do it everything is being answered practically over there so that's the change and the last one that i want to cover is the virtual reality so what is virtual reality some of you may already know about it some of you have a vr device at your home so in a mobile phone you can add your virtual reality which is like a lens right which you wear it on on the screen like a google glass or a or a image or a device which which means like 
you are part of it you are going through the experience so if you're going through a virtual tour of europe or usa right you are standing in the place you get that feeling you you are actually into that so that is what the virtual reality and augmented reality uh, it is still developing phase but right now there are vr available so if you want to understand the anatomy or the human heart or how it works and everything it really allows you to actually get the complete feel of it so that's what the virtual reality but it's expensive and the devices and other things uh, we have to purchase so that is it'll take time right but then it is there and it is being used in uh, certain localities today is that we need to see how these are getting developed in the future right okay now um, i'll quickly go into the requirements uh, pretty much some of us know i already touched upon it we need a governance for the digital education there is no control today there is no governing body uh, government has some e-policies that are uh, created but uh, the, the framework is not ready the framework has to evolve so we have to watch that space right now there is a lot of debate going on whether we can have a digital education for schools or for kindergarten and everything so there is no uh, hard and permanent rule being set up so the education sector here uh, would be focusing on it so we have to look at the intellectual property framework and development on that side um, the challenges faced so we saw all the advantages and the pros everything now we have to see what the challenges are there right everything will have its own challenges now everybody knows digital illiteracy is there which means we need to ensure our faculty and staff all are trained they cannot jump in directly and start uh, delivering through this medium uh, and that also has to be done properly right we need to have that in the curricula we need to have it everywhere um, and the other challenges people face is the internet bandwidth and the devices right um, uh, we cannot say everyone will have an uh, hi-fi laptop with um, in i5 or intel pentium 5 or high speed processor and a mobile phone with the higher ram and a high speed connection so a lot of us do not have a uniformity here device uniformity internet connection uniformity so the experience is going to change a bit based on the devices that we have uh, and definitely Wi-Fi is now required at every home and you know what the challenges we face with Wi-Fi uh, the signal issues power disconnection and all those things so it has to settle down we can solve the device issue we can give a uniform device to everyone we can solve uh, some of these factors but these are still remains a challenge today and the penetration at uh, um, tier two towns and villages haven't happened so they are at uh, 10 percent or not even uh, in some cases so which means uh, we, there is no parity right so some of them do mention about how the government school kids are going to learn right we can definitely have to improve on the infrastructure and the language barrier is also there uh, because every state have their own languages too uh, english being the common medium not necessarily need to be the same across so we have to uh, be aware of that uh, there are a lot of active campaigning and sessions are there so i would encourage everyone on this call to uh, try and attend a lot of those webinars trying to understand the transformation uh, trying to be digitally aware and help others uh, in this process uh, and a lot of workshops are available for you to sign up and then learn so definitely we have to also do a bit of self-learning and also depend on our institutions to help us here and um, one quick point about the common issues that is the no self-discipline and distraction of the media which is really true right today we have all the lines muted so that we are reducing the background noises but uh, we cannot do it if i have to interact with each one of you i have to unmute the line then we need we will have a lot of uh, distractions happening there and self-discipline is another thing that we have to inculcate school we can implement the discipline because we are physically handling the kids and the students right but how do you do it over a media like online media here right so a self-discipline factor comes in and we don't have face-to-face -face interaction to an extent the video uh, helps us but to what extent we have to look at it um, and this is another in interesting factor 
millennials millennials or generation y generation y is somebody who was born from 1980 to 1994 right so 1980 to 94 that millennials are the ones now are working as faculties are working as teachers professors etc right but they are handling generation z the gen z which is 1995 to 2012 born are our students are the kids who are today uh, in the school in the colleges right or maybe just finished their college so that is the generation gap the 95 to 2012 are exposed to the internet and the phones and everything while they are born and living with it but in 80 to 94 completed their college or the schools without this right so then we need we have this gap and gen alpha which is the current one which is 2013 born till 2025 is called generation alpha the generation alpha is going to be even more different than the gen z because they are exposed to digital tools straight away because at least gen z saw the digital tool evolving in the later half but they are going to see a lot more so always see these changes whom the generation that we are handling and how do we actually ensure that and again about investment infrastructure and literacy i already touched upon it so this is an advanced area probably i will not do much uh, talk on this but uh, just a quick for your information which you can research later these are the emerging technologies in the higher education iot which is internet of things blockchain uh, ar and vr i already mentioned which is the virtual reality and the augmented reality big data ai and machine learning and chatbots so these are the terms not only for carpets they are applicable they are even applicable to education today so we are not now differentiating them they are coming in early so it is going to really going to analyze the kids strengths and weakness gives tons of data to the parents and teachers to help the kids grow learn and be confident so there's a lot of uh, things are happening over here but this is beyond the scope of our session today but this is something that i would say if you are not aware of it um, just try and understand what this means and how this is going to impact you and impact the digital education all right so uh, we are left with uh, six minutes i will have a quick uh, demo of uh, the microsoft teams and then we will wrap up this session so Microsoft Teams is what my kids are using um, for uh, learning, which is provided by their school. Um, I'm not going to cover everything, but just give you an eye of how the screen looks like, what activities happens in there, and uh, uh, what exactly. They're exactly mimicking everything in the school, like attendance, taking, uh, how the classes are uh, run, how they provide assignments, how do they actually access the files, and how do they uh, interact with these students how the groups are formed and how the call happens so i'll quickly just open the microsoft teams here in my system okay uh what you see is the um microsoft team um screen once you log in over here right at the top so they posted the videos what happens is just look at the menus on the left hand side uh what you see here is the activity chat teams so i click on the teams right when i click on the teams here uh, so my daughter is in class seven they have sections a b c d so uh, you will have uh, sections divided so accordingly you can enter into your section so this is class grade seven so this is microsoft teams okay so every tool may have a different way of representing things so uh, this is the this is their um, uh, grade seven so like how we see in facebook right so all the interactions will appear on on the screen over here you can see they are uh, providing those um, uh, uh, interactions so every student are added into this channel 
grade 7 grade 8 grade 9 these are the classes let's assume then you add the students into this grade and then you can build a channel on the left hand side if you see uh, where i'm uh, clicking on the general then biology physics english max um, second language uh, social third language based on that they have this channel so they go into each of these channel and look for the materials and content over there so um, teachers have a flexibility of creating one session for all or like based on each session they can have a separate uh, channel created so that helps you in terms of uh, channelizing things and on the left hand side if you notice there is an assignment block where you can uh, click on the assignments and notice what are the assignments are there so when i click on that uh, it will open uh, the assignments what um, what is being provided and then you have a calendar which uh, which provides them with the what are the sessions are happening they can click on those sessions and join them right now you do not see it but we can have all those uh, sessions populated so they can go for those sessions uh, it allows you to call anybody in your school you don't need to physically call via phone so all you need to do is type the uh, name of uh, your friend or a teacher you can dial in and you can have a voip call or you can have a group call or you can have a group chat etc you can have all of those and there is a file section where uh, they'll upload um, the files that are used in the classes uh, today the timetable uh, the presentation etc so the left hand menu helps them to navigate uh, and then um, the chats the chats is what the kids love so they interact with the a teacher or their friends and others so during the session you have an option to block the chats block all the calling but offline as well the kids can enter in and then access all of this and within the team main main screen right right on the top also you can see uh, there are set of menus on the top like what are the posts what we see is the post like a timeline how we see in the facebook right in the facebook we have all those details then the file section the file section when i click on it it is going to show me uh, what are the files that are uploaded uh, you can see there are new files that the recording of today's class and uh, the latest timetable and everything you can see there then there are assignments then there are um, section for grades uh, that we have over here so all of this information is there so it's a very uh, nice and interactive tool this can be installed on your mobile phone this can be installed on your um, on your uh, laptop and then uh, manage it um, pretty much just uh, I do not want to cover it fully but just give you an idea of what schools are doing um, through Google Classroom or through Microsoft Teams um, this is this is my daughter's screen so I'm just sharing what uh, what is happening there and uh, how they are handling all of it so they've been using it for last two weeks and they have classes starting from 9 30 till 2 o'clock with the breaks in between and uh, completing everything as much as what do they do in the school right they cover uh, the subject they provide assignment they provide time to chat or interact ask questions uh, talk to the um, teacher talk to the peers form groups group assignments upload your assignments once you finished so that they can evaluate and then respond back so whatever you can imagine the activities in the school right everything right from prayer attendance um, then the break and then um, interaction all of this can be achieved because this is a platform right this is the platform you should still have a content so the content you can either buy it from outside or the content can be like the teachers can prepare a ppt and then conduct a session like how i am doing you can share the screen the students can join and complete it so um, we also need a platform because the platform is the one that is going to help you on the administration side uh, you need to track uh, all these things you need to track the assessment score you need to track the um, various tests so they do conduct an online test you can have an online test conducted time-based test can be conducted so you have to trust the student and then have them do it um, but it's a different question whether small kids can uh, uh, use it and then how they will be able to benefit because they need help in uh, connecting uh, clicking on the various menus but i would definitely say from class six onwards we can definitely use the digital education they are like uh, uh, really um, uh, aware of how to use it and manage it the misuse portion of it is something that i told all in the challenge to ensure we have to try and uh, uh, try and control it so that's what uh, primarily a quick demo about uh, 
this. And I'm wrapping up um, the session here. Uh, so this is the closing remark. Manohoran spoke at the beginning of the session um, in the introduction. Yes, sir. We can move to any question, sir. Question and answer. Any participants, do you want to ask any questions? You can ask through chat box or your mic can be unmuted and you can be able to ask. Dear participants, Unmute, sir. Subhram, sir. Kindly unmute mm -hmm. all the uh, all the mics okay. are muted. Kindly unmute. You can always send an email um, to the um, address that I mentioned here on the screen as well, sir, uh, or you sir, can also we can sir, take some you, questions. Sir. Sir, one question is there. Sir. Mm -hmm. Which one is the best educational tool for online is free? It's from uh, Suresh. Okay. Uh, you can definitely try Google Classroom, sir. Um, that is uh, an effective tool that can be uh, that can be used right now. Not many uh, free online tools are there, but uh, uh, I would recommend uh, Google Classroom to start with. Uh, and uh, also, I would say Microsoft Teams as well, you can consider uh, because the license costs have been reduced a lot in the recent time. It will be very affordable to um, get a 200, 300 license based on your institution. You can negotiate also. Do we have any other questions, sir? Any questions? Uh, Mike? One minute, sir. Uh, we have unmuted all your mics. Any questions? Uh, Any questions, sir? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Some guy, three, ma'am, is want to talk like that. I think so. Ma'am, guy, three, ma'am. No, no response from well. Shall we wait for two or three minutes, sir? Sure, sure. Dear participants, we have posted the feedback link. Kindly fill the feedback link so that you can able to get your certificates in time. Dear participants, kindly fill the feedback forms so that you can get the certificates in time. Any questions, sir? Dear participants, anybody wants to ask any question? No, sir. Sir, we can go for conclusion, sir. Brown, sir. Sure, sure. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining the session. I can see hundreds of uh, participants joining the session today. Uh, it's really encouraging uh, and appreciate you all taking time today to join the session. Uh, I hope you find the session valuable. You understood uh, some of the trends and the tools and uh, the evolution of the digital education that's happening. Um, and you, there are some takeaways for you from this session today. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. Manoharan and uh, the Kanchi College of Education in organizing this webinar. 
uh, it was uh, really uh, great to sharing my experience and my knowledge on this session today and uh, been a great audience um, we could able to start the session and end it on time uh, thank you everyone and uh, we'll meet you soon bye for now okay sir thank you thank you alpha